Now, thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're asking if we truly have lowered the standards uh, as regards our morality. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 So, Norma, before we went on the break, you were talking about, you know, um, how we got to where we are today. And I'm saying to you that, I mean, when you see examples like a Kim Kardashian or Melina Trump where they've gone all full-blown naked and everything and all of a sudden, you know, they're being um, idolized and all of that. Any young girl that is watching, I mean, would definitely say that, you know what, what's, I mean, because right now they say sex sells. So everything you want to do, just use sex to, with, with it to and it will it. sell quickly. You get in instant following, everybody follow. I mean, look at the young girl that came out to say she was dating a dangote, for instance. She's a single girl. In, in, in the past, you would frown at, ah, ah, why are you fornicating and all of that? Nobody even cares anymore. Mm -hmm. Immediately, she announced that she was dating dangote. She had, I mean, I literally looked at her page from, it, for, it was from 7,000 to 14,000 to 35,000 to now. I don't even know whatever it is that she had as following. Meanwhile, you that you are preaching, Cover yourself, do this, do that. <laughs> Nobody's following you. Even if you look at the culture of social media, right? The young people do not even follow people that are supposedly saying all the right things, being inspirational. No. Everybody wants to follow the person. You see that you're, you're flashing money or you're flashing your butt, you're flashing your boobs, you're flashing... You know, these are the things that we follow. So my point is, this, these things did not just happen overnight. Maybe this thing has always been there, but because we were too... Um, would I call it trying to form were religious and all of that? So everybody was keeping it hush hush. But now social media has given everybody platform to it because I do not believe that I can become somebody else that I'm not on social media, except maybe that thing was already inside, inside. of me, which is my argument that the standard I don't think that that standard that we think maybe is a perceived moral standard that we think we have. If the standards were there, even social media do not have the power or it does not have the power to change. You know, change me just like that. But let me come to Lamy, that you can now respond to that. Lamy, okay. are you there now? Can you hear me? Yes, I am. Yeah, go okay, ahead. What please. was your question? No, 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 no. I was just saying. To, I was just giving an analogy. So you know, yeah, go ahead. But she agrees. So uh, Lama my, agrees with you, I, though. Well, another thing I would like to say to Lama is: Do you, do you? What is the role of values inculcating values in the home? What is the role of it in all of this? Because for me, from a personal angle, uh, I think my father did a good job when it comes to teaching us contentment and values. Values are, it's, you can't see it. It's not something that is inculcated in you, right? Do you think that children of nowadays have values? Okay. Mm. I think you attempted to answer that, but that was when she was loved us. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Okay, I can yeah, go, go ahead. ahead yeah. All right, thank you, Lamy, for that, uh, uh, you know, th thought, right? Okay, I would use my daughter as an example. She came to me today and she said, Mommy, I want, can I have Capri Sun? And I said, no. And then she left and came back again later in the day. Can I have Capri Sun? I said, I haven't changed my mind. No. And then she came back this evening just before I left. Or she had told her brother that, I think mommy can now allow me to have Capri Sun. <laughs> so her brother came to me to say, mommy, do you allow Jeremy to? I said, no, I haven't changed my mind. Now, why did I do that? I told them that that it's there does not mean that you must have it. Hmm. You must be able to tell yourself no. And you can have today doesn't mean that you're going to have tomorrow. So that I teach them contentment. Because today, before you know it, I have to run around to look for the money to always make sure that Caprison is available. Mm. And then from Caprison, it will move to something bigger until she would always want and always I want to entitled. have what she wants. And if I don't cut it at that point, you know, that's where the problem came from. Mm. We just start in little ways, you know, you just shift the bar. You shift the bar a little. Okay, it's okay. Oh, he's just a child. Oh, don't worry. He will grow. And that continued habit or, um, you know, way of doing things is being trained over time. By the time you're talking to a 30-year-old, that is a 30-year-old skilled in the art of entitlement. 
How are you going to break that barrier? Hmm. So I think that that is where we have the problem. We have people who's, um, they no longer have willpower. Hmm. It's the power of choice. You have the choice to do what is right. You also have a choice to choose to do something wrong. But everything has consequences. And over time, these are the consequences that we're experiencing. Huh, no, ma. You just hit it that any, everything has consequence. We've not been seeing any consequences in no, Nigeria. No, but it's only a matter of time. You know, that, that, like you said, there's nothing hidden under the sun. For every action, there must be a reaction. No, there's no consequence. Over time, now, we don't, sometimes we don't see I consequences. I do. Uwa, yeah. sometimes we don't see consequences in the way the consequences yes, actually as, happen. Yeah. So for me personally, right, I choose not to do certain things, not because... I, I cannot just do it. But I think also maybe because there's a subconscious inside of me that just says, this is wrong and I'm not going to do it. Not for who is what watching. Are, yes. Are, those are your values. Those are the things that you are governed by. Those are your values. Those are your code of conduct. Because you've so, chosen to have a code of conduct mm, for yourself. Yeah. But there's some people who don't even... What is code of conduct? Over time, because they grew up in an environment where there was no code of conduct. So I come into that space and I see that misbehavior. Mm. And because I have code of conduct, I know it's wrong. But that person, they don't have anything. So but you that think, is what they know as sorry, well. Let me come to Tammy or <laughs> let me come to Tammy and then I'll ask, I'll ask another question. Tammy, I'd like to share thoughts. Go ahead, please. Okay, so, um, I mean, I've listened to everyone and, you know, my initial thought was actually uh, very much aligned with Lamy's thought. The fact that I think that evil has always been, but on what scale? And I think that social media is not just, um, is not just amplifying it, it's also influencing, not just social media, now media generally. There's an influence, there's a powerful influence of media. So, for example, a child who is not formed or a person who perhaps has some thoughts and certain things just look you don't have a thought on it or you are not you have not made up your mind then it looks good it looks nice you probably would think about doing it twice or you think about it again so i think social media amplifies it and it also influences it not just amplifying that so when it's influencing it more people are saying that oh there's really no big deal in this oh maybe we could just try a little bit and then the bars are getting lowered so if 10 people were going to do certain things before, maybe we now have about 100. And guess what? These 100 people are not people that are keeping quiet about it now. They now feel, oh, there's this, you know, liberalism over. I can do whatever I want. And, you know, this brings me back to something I find very interesting. The fact that the difference between law and morality is what I now see at play here. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things, for example, fraud. If somebody actually does something wrong, you still you, you commit fraud, you commit a crime or anything like that. We have something that backs it up and says you cannot do this. It is an offense. Mm -hmm. And for it to be a crime, it mm -hmm. must be punishable. Mm -hmm. It is under social and so law. And so we can easily come to that law and refer to the law. But when it comes to morality, it is personal. If when we, for example, when we speak about decency or, you know, or dressing or anything like that, if you ask me what is my sense of this decency or dressing, it will be different from if I ask another person. And the other person will have a different thought. Now, group um, sense of what we feel as Nigerians or what we feel as a society, mm -hmm. there's even division because there's a lot of influence. There's a lot of thoughts. People have different thoughts. So it's not as if we agree on it and then we say someone is breaking it. So I think eventually it's still going to go back to what the family is able to inculcate in their children. It's also going to go back to, for example, faith. Faith is very powerful. Very. What religious group? So the reason I would not do certain things is because some I'm a Christian and somewhere I know that this is wrong. This is not <laughs> right. The same thing with have someone who is a Muslim, right? Or maybe I've been taught that way. But I can't impose it on someone else who is not bound by my religion, someone who did not grow up in the same family as I grew up, did not go to the same society I was with, you know, or has a different thought. And so I see here that eventually the families, the religious organizations, or, or maybe a person's personal convictions and faith that will do a lot of work because these consequences we speak about, you, you might really not see any negative consequence in the sense of it while on earth. You may not really get to see anything like, oh, this person did it and it went scot-free. We may not see that. But so thank, 
There's they mean, just a need to, um, the society is evolving and morality is evolving. It's just a need for us to look inwards and find the things that we hold dear. And that comes to values, our faith, our, you know, our they, core values. They mean. Things, and then try to pass it on. <laughs> that thing going so over. They mean. don't have influence over everyone. I want okay, to. Okay, pause here. So, so I, I, this, what, what we are talking about in general is, have we lowered the bar? That was the question yeah. we asked in the first place. You who said we lowered the bar. You have not yet answered me. What bar did we lower? Because what, so now what I hear you say, tell me about law, I'm, and I'm trying to rationalize, uh, rationalize it in my head. When mothers would carry, or parents would carry their daughters to go and give to a, what's it called, a sex um, a peddler or whatever, to go and let the child travel abroad, and go and have prostitute and, and send money home so that they can cater to their family, right? What happened? You know, if that child sends in so money, the pay, hold on, let me finish. Law. It is, listen, and we've not finished because nobody arrested any parents. Okay. Nobody arrested any parent for doing that. So if that child sends in money, the father and the mother do not call the child a prostitute. They call the child a, a supporter of the, what's it called? Of the family. A breadwinner of the family right these lines have been blurred from time immemorial the only thing that we are looking at now is, is we're seeing people coming out with so much boldness to do so many things parents have been paying um what's it called teachers to 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 to, to uh, change the, the, the res results, results. Of, the, of their children manipulate the results thank you and uh, what happened to them did they arrest those parents did anything happen so nothing happened so that I'm, that's what i'm asking was is this morality that we're talking well, about is it, wait let me finish thinking. let me finish is it an illusion yeah, in our me. wait now let me finish is it an illusion in our head or it was there was it really there who are yes <laughs> I, I want <laughs> our guests to come in please I go ahead quickly okay go ahead let me let our guests come in you can okay. come in i was going to say before the start of that conversation that economic reason is part of the decline mm. what has yes. contributed to the decline Mm. Do you know, Kua, that there is um, an association of Yahoo mothers. Yahoo Boys Mothers of Nigeria? Yes. Can you imagine that in the Nigeria of today, a mother would actually know that the child is involved in a crime and they, they actually brought themselves together to support them? The day I heard, I thought it was a lie until some other people confirmed it to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that economic reason is part of it. And ex um, uh, um, population explosion. What do you think, Inoma? Because a lot of people I, are having children that they don't have capacity to look after. I totally so agree. it's definitely things are going to go spiral. They're going to go out of hands. What do you think? I, I totally agree with you, um, Lamy. Poverty has increased in the land. I mean, nobody cares. The government doesn't care by their actions. They do not do things that help. Imagine Nigeria in 2020, and we're still talking about people not having light, basic amenities. So people, over time, poverty has been on the rise. It's increased. So is it poverty that eroded our No, our no, way? but people became desperate as well. Mm. People des people's desperation pushed them to blow the lines even further. Let me, if I may borrow yeah. your words. So blow the lines even further. Nobody cares anymore. You know, parents are damning the consequences and saying, you know what, do whatever you want to do. Just make sure that we eat. Mm. Make sure that we have food in the house and we can take care of your family members. Mm. So some people are even pushed to doing these things, not because they don't have moral standards, mm. but in the face of what they're going through, their family, they can watch their families uh, 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 die in poverty or in hunger, they would use whatever means possible mm. just to make ends meet. Mm. So over time, things have gotten bad. Mm. But there was once a time, I cannot not go back to that place where people were content. Mm. Even with the little that you earned every day, you will come back to a family and with what you have brought, the woman of the house will turn it into something that will be beneficial for everyone. Mm. You will see the young man look up to his father or grow up to say, I, my, my father was a, my role model. My mother was my role model. She would handle the house. She would not complain. She would not do this. She would not do that. But where are the fathers today? 
where are the mothers? Mm. Everyone in their desperation is being concerned with different things. They're working so hard, they don't even have time to even look into what the children are doing. Who are the standards of the children today? Mm. Probably the nannies or caretakers. And what values do these caretakers have to pass on to the children? Huh. Let's take comments, please, from our audience. Um, Tammy, you have some. More, um, oh. Yes, I do. Go ahead. Okay, so there's a comment and a question here from Ade. It says, good evening, ladies. Happy birthday to Pastor Sam at AME. We have really lowered the bar nowadays because of bad governance and poor leadership. Growing up and back in early 80s, we have both moral instructions. We had both moral instructions and history as a compulsory subject in secondary school. Who did this to us as Nigerians to have ignored this subject? Regards. Thank mm. you, Adi. That's from the UK. Go ahead, Norma. Do you want to answer that? Yeah, I, I agree with Ade. The, the, so I grew up in a time where there was history. I knew some of the Usman Danfodio. We had stories about them. The Queen Amina. and the um, Benin Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Some of those things. And you learned strength. You learned resilience. These are values that are long eroded in our society mm -hmm. now. Because people say... I mean, blast all of those things. I'm not interested. <laughs> I need to eat. I need to, my belly, or, you know, I need to survive. Mm. That's the, uh, I need to hustle. Mm. That's the language I don't like that word. of today. <laughs> Let me take comments. Um, Lami, you have a comment with you. Morality has, been, has always been there, but we have seen a decline in its emphasis with time. That's from Kolade. Uh, Lami, you have a comment with you? Then says, more needs to be done to emphasize on good morals. Thank you, Ways, for this topic. Very apt. There is a clear decline, and this reflects in even our kids not showing basic respect in greeting people. Hmm. Then um, Angela says, I believe we live in a world of good, bad, and ugly. It hasn't changed and would remain same forever. Wow, that's from Angela. Then Benson says, morality slash behavior can only be enforced by consequences, which is what I was saying. No consequence. It, it, it is the absence of consequence that has lowered the bar of morality. So mm. if we were to give like a final one minute advice, you know, to maybe the government or something, I don't even know who to give. Well, who, it cuts across. Who do we, who do we? <laughs> no, wait, because consequences is not mm. who we give consequences. It's the government mm. now, for instance. Mm. Parents that are going to go and uh, bribe uh, teachers to allow their children to pass, who is going to penalize them? It's not the school, now, it's the government. Because you know what? Parents are so keen about a school making straight A's. They want their children to pass. So schools now have become uh, smarter. Have, yeah. uh, they will tell you that in our school, we have a record of straight A's. Mm. So parents will come to those schools, they will pay their school fees. So who, would, who should be held accountable for the consequences of the moral decline that we're talking about? Well, I think the responsibility lies on Parenting, it lies on the government, it lies on putting in the right leaders. Mm. So over time, of course, the responsibility starts, charity begins at home. Mm. Parents, I think, whether a parenting school, I don't know why we have courses to go and read about engineering and this and that, and there's no school of parenting where people can actually learn values. how to train and values for societal use, even for the community. Hmm. So if we begin to look for, then again, it goes back to what Lamy said initially, the legislature, who are these people that are making policies and rules that help to checkmate people? Hmm. There's no rule, there's nobody enforcing that. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to the family, uh, and the government to help because if the government is 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 strengthened by the kind of people who will uphold these values then people will ha uh, have caution when they want to do certain things mm. and then when the home front is also helping because the best time to get um, an adult fully formed is from the uh, from childhood mm. so when we have more and more parents who preach and morality and are intentional mm. with the, not just preaching mm. but walking the walk being mm. the example absolutely then these children can see what to model right because we are lacking in all of this the entertainment industry has and taking over technology has become the role models that these absolutely. are absolutely sadly we've run out of time Tammy and lami 
<laughs> we're so sorry. I think we had a bit of challenge with the Zoom um, uh, technology today, but with, we, we'll, we'll survive, we'll live. Thank you so much, Nomai Fanga. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Lami, if you can hear me. All right, so um, this is really... Thank you, Uwa. Thank you, Noma. <laughs> well, this is a very fantastic conversation. We're going to keep the conversation coming. Trust me, we have no, we're not done yet. This is just the beginning. <laughs> All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. Now, if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media platforms. And this is going to be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The most important human endeavor is the striving for morality in our actions. Our inner balance and even our very existence depends on it. Only morality in our actions can give beauty and dignity to life. I just hope people can get this. A lot of people have actually lost it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy.